Hey community, we're back and I'm Brandy B, the community MP. And I'm Brandy G, the community MP. And together we are b the, the community, community MPs. MPs. So today we're talking about urinary tract infections, which yes. are very common. But um, so what, you, I want you to give the people like a, um, a, just show them how the urine flows. Okay. The body, okay. 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 <laughs> so basically, you have your two kidneys, and then from there, mm -hmm. so the kidneys they basically filter the blood to produce the urine. Okay. And then you have two little, looks like long little flexible straws. Okay. To me, um, those are called the ureters. They move the the urine from the kidneys to the bladder. So then you have the bladder. Okay. And the bladder stores the urine. <clears throat> and then you have the urethra, which is another little straw and it um takes the urine from the bladder to the toilet okay or diaper so when or, people get urinary tract infections um a bladder infection mm -hmm. so what's going on so basically it it happens when the bacteria from the your outside of the body goes mm -hmm. up the urethra and how far up it goes determines what kind of infection it creates okay so some facts about UTIs mm -hmm. or urinary tract infections, it's more more it's most common in women. Yes. Um twenty-five to forty percent of women ages twenty to age forty are at most at risk or the ones who are common to get UTIs. Yes. Yeah. Um UTIs account for a lot of um office visits. Six million. Yes, that's a Six. lot. That's a lot. Six million office visits per, per year. year. That's crazy. Of UTIs. Yeah. Okay. So some types. We have bladder infections, mm -hmm. which is also known as cystitis, and that's the most common one because right. that's the lower urinary tract. And then we have kidney infections called polynephritis. So right. that's the upper urinary tract mm -hmm. if that becomes infected. Yeah. So signs and symptoms of a bladder infection, that's the lower urinary yes. tract. Um, pain or burning when urinating. These are the, these are the most common types of uh, bladder infections, like Brandy said, but frequent urination. So mm -hmm. you feel like you got to go to the bathroom, you go to the bathroom, feel like you got to go again. The urge or need to urinate, like you feel like oh, I got to get there quick. And then you get there and like only a little bit comes out. You may notice blood in your urine mm -hmm. or discomfort just like in your lower abdomen. I remember being a um, teenager <clears throat> and I first had a urinary tract infection. Like, mm -hmm. I guess I was holding my bladder a lot. Like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't go to the bathroom. I would just hold my bladder a lot. And so I got a urinary tract infection. And I can remember, like, having to go to the bathroom, get there, just dribble. Then, like, 10 minutes later, I got to go back to the bathroom. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, oh, my God, what is going on? I didn't know what was going on. But <laughs> My daughter used to hold her, her bladder a lot. And I have a bad, I still do it. So I have a bad habit because I drive a lot. So mm -hmm. I still do it. And I got to catch myself, like, you yeah. have to stop and use the bathroom. I will hold my urine all day for, like, 8 to 12 hours. Oh, my gosh. I know that's not good. Don't at do that. All. Don't do that. Don't, Don't do that. Do, as when, we say, not as Because when you become older, you're going to be incontinent. <laughs> you're going to be dribbling. <laughs> you're going to have incontinence, so don't do that, yes. <laughs> all right, so some of the signs and symptoms of kidney infections, mm -hmm. which is the upper part of the um, urinary tract. Right. Um, polynephritis. Mm -hmm. So, fever. Temperature can be 99.9 .9 and above. Mm -hmm. um, pain in the flank area on one or both sides. So pain in the area where your kidneys are located. Right, yeah. Nausea, vomiting. Mm -hmm. And with this, um, with polynephritis, a lot of times, sometimes they have to be hospitalized. Yeah, it's, because it's, it's way it's, more serious. Yeah, Because if you think about it, this bacteria has traveled from outside of the body, up the urethra, so past the bladder, the bladder up the ureters, so to the, the kidneys. kidneys. Yes. So, yeah. That's serious. I know it is. So some of the risk factors. Having sex frequently, mm -hmm. diabetes. If you've had a kidney or bladder infection within the past 12 months, yeah, it puts you at increased risk of having yes. another one. And then using spermicide as birth control. So yes. if you know if you use spermicide and you notice that you're having reoccurring infections, try a different type of birth control. Yes. And what else be? For a man, if the man is not circumcised, mm -hmm. um, that can put him at risk. Um, having insertive anal sex with, you know, two men having insertive yeah. anal sex can put them at risk also for urinary tract infection. Also men that have anal sex with women. Yes. So, yeah, that whoever, I guess, in the male-male situation, whoever the one is doing the inserting it's at is, greater is risk at greater risk for urinary tract infections. Yeah. Um, having kidney stones or mm -hmm. anything that blocks the changes of the flow from the urine mm -hmm. can um, be at risk. They're at risk for having um, urinary tract infections. 
Some people are genetically, the way they're made, um, the body structure, mm -hmm. can't put them at risk for urinary tract infections. And also, patients who have catheters, yep. indwelling catheters, or those who do intermittent catheterization, mm -hmm. they're at risk for yeah. um, urinary tract infections. And that's just because, like, you're putting a foreign object into... In and out, yeah. yeah. And most people that, most patients that do intermittent catheters are um, doing them at home. Yes. And so... It's really not a sterile environment, right. so you have you at risk of you know bacteria yeah. on the catheter. Mm -hmm. You know if you're not doing a sterile technique. So, yep. all right. So how do we prevent it? Drink plenty of water. Make yes. sure you're drinking plenty of water throughout the day. I say drink a gallon. <laughs> you can't go wrong with drinking a gallon of water, right? How much have you drank today? Mm -hmm. I don't think I had no water. I had coffee. Zero. I had coffee. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm just being. Do honest. as we say, not as we do. Um, I had coffee, but I'm going to drink some when I go back so I can eat my lunch and I'm going to drink some water on my lunch. Yeah, because you got to work out today, too. Yes, I do. And you I need to be day. hydrated. I work out every day. At least four days a week. I, I do three, four days a week. <laughs> every day. Three days. <laughs> no, four days. Four days. All I'm saying is, I know that you work out. Most, but I'm saying, go to your workout hydrated. Okay. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to be... <laughs> <laughs> work out. Look at how thirsty. Yeah, especially when I do a jog. I'd be like, oh... <laughs> I'm trying, but I'm, I'm trying. You're doing good. Okay. You're looking slim, girl. <laughs> um, hot girl summer. Yes. It's coming. 2021. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so also urinate after sex. Make sure that's for the male and the female. female. Make sure okay. you go urinate after sex because that just gets any bacteria that yes. was able to travel up, up the urethra. <laughs> yeah, up the urethra. <laughs> it flushes it out. Yes. And then there... Always talk to your healthcare provider before you take any over-the-counter supplements or anything. But some people take uh, cranberry pills and D-mannose, which is like a sugar tablet. But like I said, always check with your yes. primary care provider. And then postmenopausal post women mm -hmm. <laughs> who get reoccurring bladder or kidney infections um, may benefit from vaginal estrogen. Okay. Again, before you take any type of hormone replacement therapy yeah you got to get a prescription for that anyway yeah so yeah Just, it's not nothing that you can go over the counter and say i want some vaginal estrogen yeah and don't yeah. ask your friend for none of <laughs> no. theirs <laughs> please don't and then of course uh prophylactic antibiotics and those that usually i see that more in older people yes, yes. they 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 get the infection so frequently that they are put on antibiotics yes. to just prevent them from happening okay but, and so we know we use antibiotics to treat bladder infections. Right, yeah. um, a short course, if you have a truly cystitis or a bladder infection, mm -hmm. you want a longer course if you get the kidney infection, which is the polynephritis. Right. So you may be on yeah. medication for a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. okay? Also, you can do pain medicine um, like Tylenol for any pain mm -hmm. or discomfort. Mm -hmm. And there has an over-the-counter medication called Eurostat. Mm -hmm. You and can that, use that. Yeah. And I think they have another one, pyridium or something like that. Yeah. 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 You can use those also. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for mm -hmm. urinary tract infections. Yes. I think we're going to come back uh, at a later date and talk about urinary tract infections in, in kids. kids. Yeah. yeah. And um, just remember, this information that we give y'all is for men and women. Yes. So. I know. Cause somebody told me they thought it was just for women. Just because there's like, two no. gorge black girls yes. on here <laughs> does not mean we're not trying to educate both men and women. Okay? Yes, we are. Uh, yes. And remember, this is information is just for educational purposes mm -hmm. only. It's not to replace your primary care provider. Period. We, period. We still need you to go see your primary care provider. We just want you to be knowledgeable about what's going on with your body. And, you know, and I'm thinking about the urinary tract infections because I remember I used to um, work at a women's health clinic. Mm -hmm. And you'll be surprised how many people don't know what a urinary tract infection is. They'll come in with the symptoms, don't mm -hmm. know what's going on, but they had no clue they had a urinary tract infection. So yeah. especially our teenagers, that teenage population. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like I I had a lot of patients who were teenagers who had urinary tract infections. They didn't know what it was. They just thought something was going on down mm -hmm. there and they were scared. Yep. So share this with your teens. Mm -hmm. Have them follow us. Yep. We're Abby. B and B the community MPs on Facebook, Instagram. And also su subscribe to. I can't talk today. I feel that's so, okay. I feel tongue tied because you don't have no water. <laughs> that's no, right. Talking about me not having no water. She <laughs> no water. I'm thirsty. <laughs> but no. So follow. <laughs> on, I don't like the way you say that. I'm thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's also B and B the community MPs. Yeah. And why do we do this? Because community is our beauty. Have a great day, y'all. <laughs>